Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for the invitation to give this talk today at the International Macroorganism Day. I'm very happy to present a little bit about our research uh, in this very special ecosystem located in Northern Chile. Uh, the title of my talk is Microbial Diversity and Conservation of Poly-Extreme Environments of Atacama Desert. My name is Cristina Adorador. I'm working at the University of Antofagasta in Northern Chile. This is a satellite image from the Northern Chile and also Southern Peru, Bolivia, and Northern Argentina. All this area is very interesting because it's just the Southern part of the Andes and between the, the, the Andes is located this high plateau of the Andes called Altiplano, where some of this area are occupied by large evaporitic basins called salares. In the past, uh, the salares were part of large paleo lakes that occupies all this, all this area. And through the time, because of different processes, especially evaporation, and also some tectonic movements uh, produce the isolation of these um, saline lakes. So now in Chile um, have been described more than 50 of these ecosystems and today I will talk about some of them, especially about the microbial diversity that we can found uh, on these uh, systems. And there I it's my city, Antofagasta, just in the middle of the Atacama Desert. Well, Northern Chile is also very well known because uh, of the large capacity of astronomical observations. So from Atacama, it has been described many important astronomical discoveries. And also, uh, it's important not only the, the astronomical universe, let's say that, also the microbial universe. That is something that we'll try to, to mention today. The um, microbes of the Kama have been described a uh, long time ago. This is uh, one of the earliest uh, works that um, is from 1966. It's the first description of some bacteria that uh, have been isolated from soils of Atacama by the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in the US, showing at the time a very important diversity, especially uh, regarding taxa like actinobacteria and also some firmicutes that are very common in, especially in the hyperarid area of the, of the Atacama. So since then, many, many different um, Investigation have been done in the in the area, uh, as I, as I say, with some astrobiological interest, but also um, asking, especially how this uh, community can live here, where are under, for example, a very high UV radiation and also nutrients limitation. Um, all this uh, information or, or, or this research have been, as you can see here, focused on topics about microbial diversity um, in the last, especially in the last uh, years because of the um, appearance and also use, massive use of, of sequencing uh, without culturing. But also, as, a, as I say before, there are a lot of interests about um, the microbial community composition of soils or Mars-like soils uh, also, how it could be the colonization of uh, endolithic or epolitic community. Um, also, some topics about ecology, environment, and biotechnology and biogeochemistry. So, uh, it's, a, it's a place that is uh, a lot of interest, especially the, about the microbial communities here. But Chile is a very special country. We can say it's a land of extremes from the north to the south, to the Patagonia and Antarctica. But especially in the north, it's dominated by the arid ecosystem. So here it's possible to found thermal systems, saline ecosystems, also fresh water, 
and of course, the desertic environments. All of them, as you can imagine, are very interesting microbial ecosystems. If you wanted to know more about it, um, I invite you to read the special issue that we published last year in Anton van Leeuwenhoek about the microbiology of the Atacama Desert. So the microbial ecology of Northern Chile have been focused especially in topics about diversity, adaptation, functions, bioprospection, especially uh, regarding the, the, the searching for new bioactive compounds, and also astrobiology and extreme environments. So this is a picture of a typical salar uh, here in, in Northern Chile. This is one of my favorites, Salar de Tara. It's located at more than 4,000 meters above the sea level. Um, it's, all this system are characterized by the high evaporation compared to the, to the rain. So always these this places are evaporating water, so that's why they have a negative water balance. Also, the solar radiation is very high. This is one of the places that receive uh, the largest doses of UV radiation on Earth. Uh, they present a very high variability, either in the space and also through the time. They also are a system with a high biodiversity and therefore they present a high endemism at different species level, or, or I mean at different taxa. And all of this uh, characteristic configured very fragile ecosystem. So where a little change can also produce big effects. So Salares or high altitude saline wetlands, as we usually mention in our publications, are dominated by microbial life. Here is another picture of the same system, Salar de Tara, where you can see this nice red uh, microbial mats that in this case uh, also coincide with a high concentration of iron. So extreme environments are almost by definition microbial habitats. Um, where here in, in, in Atacama and in the Altiplano are modulated these communities by high or low salinity, high or low temperature, high pressures, um, but especially um, high concentration of heavy metals, high solar radiation, high aridity, could be system with low and also some with a high pH, different concentration of oxygens, and also low activity uh, in terms of the water, water activity. Just to give you one example of uh, the different interaction that is possible to describe here on this ecosystem. This is a very nice example I, I really like. It's from one hypersaline lake of Salada Atacama. Um, what you can see here, this is snails. And on top of these snails are microbial mats that live next to the, the, the animal. And interestingly also the microbial mats, um, because of the high production of exopolysaccharides, allows that the eggs of the snail can attach to this um, matrix and avoiding the release of the eggs to the, to the water. So microbial uh, communities here plays a very important role, not only in terms of the high biodiversity, also functional role that are beyond the biogeochemical cycles. So this is special heterogeneity I already mentioned, you can see here in this picture. This is a picture of Salar de Huasco um, at the Tarapaca region um, in Northern Chile. Um, Plus, these polyextreme conditions, as already mentioned, produce multiple niches and, of course, different opportunities of diversification. So, it's one of the that's one of the reasons why we usually found a high levels of uh, taxa or, or microorganisms living here. For example, this is a typical picture of a, of a surface of a freshwater stream in one of these salares where we know uh, now that this uh, 
pink mats, for example, are dominated, are dominated by members of Rhodobacteracea or alpha protobacteria. Here, Bacteriditis, here, other Hydrogenophaga, and these um, large colonies, are, black colonies, are, are nostoc, and macro colonies of the cyanobacteria. Compare with the same ecosystem, just uh, different distance, as the landscape looks completely opposite. It's very dry. And these hypersaline pools are dominated uh, by, as you can imagine, halophilic archaea, but also the different bacteria uh, living here, like uh, Rhodobacteria again, Cyanobacteria, Bacteriodetes, Actinobacteria as well, and many other groups. These also are a typical habitat for flamingos and other uh, charismatic species of these uh, ecosystems. In terms of a specific uh, microbial diversity, we found, as I already mentioned, a large bacterial diversity, especially. The, this system are dominated by bacteria, uh, in, in comparing with archaea and eukaryotes. Uh, we describe uh, in one sample, or it is possible to find more than 40 or 30 different bacterial phyla. And in the whole system, we are counting more than 55 different phyla. So it is a very large number. And when we see this uh, composition in terms of um, um, phylotypes, um, of course, the, the diversity is, is, is increasing quite a lot. Um, the most dominant groups are protobacteria, followed by bacteriodetes, cyanobacteria, and others. And also here uh, is a big role and a very important role of the red biosphere uh, in different um, ac activities or biogeochemical processes. So in terms of the network analysis, we can see here that every site that we have sample and also every sample uh, have uh, an important number of unique uh, types and, and some of them also are shared between them either with DNA or with cDNA, showing this a very um, important kind of fingerprinting of, of different salaries. So each salar is different in terms of the microbial uh, composition. Just to give you an example of this, uh, this is a study we done, we have done this many years ago, but uh, I really like because it's just in a in a very small microbial mat, it's not more than five millimeters. So it's, it's, a, it's a basically a complex biofilm, a stratified phototrophic biofilm, where we found different layers um, regarding the, the color, pink layer, uh, green, gray, and black. And in this, um, in this microbial mat, we detected uh, high diversity and also very nicely different uh, functional groups dominated by phototrophic bacteria, especially in the surface layers. And then because of the um, anoxic condition at the six millimeter depth, it's possible also to see other taxa as typically is, is found in, in microbial mats. But again, that's happening in a, in a, in a very small mat. So you can uh, already uh, maybe imagine how important are bacteria and microorganisms in this ecosystem for different function. Well, we also have um, works in description of new bacteria um, in, in some of the salares. Uh, or group have participated in the description of tuny streptomyces, streptomyces altinoplanensis from Salar de Huasco and streptomyces huascoense, also from Salar de Huasco, both of them producing very important or having the potential to produce very important bioactive compounds. And also uh, this one of the bacteria is an, another actinomycetes subtercolabilia in from Lago Yuyayaco, that's one of the highest lakes uh, described yet. It's more than 5,000 meters, 6,000 meters, sorry, altitude at uh, almost the summit of Volcan Yuyayaco. Um, another topic that I want to talk today 
is about environmental issues. Because as already mentioned, these are very fragile ecosystems. And, and salares now are, are very, um, on, and very usually found, uh, talk about them in the press, because especially in South America, because they're also a very important source of lithium. As you may know, lithium now is, um, is one of the most important salts to, to produce lithium ion batteries that are everywhere in our computers, in our cell phone, and of course in electric cars. So it's a very high demand to obtain lithium. And, and from in Chile and also in, in, in the other salares, um, they're very rich in lithium, especially Sal Salar de Atacama. So in Salar de Atacama, we see these very nice microbial mats and flamingos that are of course part of this trophic web, um, where the base are these photosynthetic communities. But at the same time, in the same ecosystem, we have these pumps that uh, pump uh, brines from the salar every day and night, thousands of uh, liters per second of brine, filling these big evaporation pools. And that produce at the end of the, of the process, um, brines that enrich, are enriched of, uh, of lithium. This is the greenish color. So here in this GIF image, you can see how this evaporation uh, pools have been increasing in, at, at the southern part of the Salada Takama through the time, actually in the last 20 years. It's, it's very impressive to see uh, the co coinciding, you know, the big the high demand of lithium and also the, the, the growing of this uh, evaporation ponds. So the question here is, this um, human activity is really affecting the ecosystem. There are some evidence showing that uh, it is. And what we're trying to also to, to work currently is to, to figure out if uh, how that could affect actually microbial communities. It's very complicated question because, as I already mentioned, these are terminal ecosystem salaries. So it's not easy to see here our environmental damage of bacteria. It's very complicated question. So we are, we are working on it. Our first approach was to understand or to know if these uh, lithium brands are actually a microbial ecosystem or not, because it's a human as a human-made environment. So what we did was compare the, the microbial communities um, that are present at the natural brine that they're actually pumping, compared with the concentrated brine that is, um, is the final product of this process. So natural brine are dominated by chlorine, uh, sodium chloride uh, and, and, the, and the concentrated brine by lithium chloride. And we also has found that the, these concentrated uh, lithium brands of Atacama are one of the highest um, saline places on earth with more than 56% of total salinity. So we actually found um, different or differential microbial communities in the natural brands compared with the concentrated ones. The natural ones are dominated by archaea and the concentrated are dominated by bacteria. So that was uh, one very uh, important result for us because we, we, we cannot really explain, uh, uh, not, not explain, but we were very surprised to find these differences and also to found that a lithium brand called Harbor are actually a very um, diverse community of bacteria um, dominated by Firmicute, especially Bacillus. So here we report the presence of bacteria and archaea in these uh, brines, demonstrating that the hypersaline lithium brines of Atacama support viable microorganisms and represent the upper saline limit of life on Earth by date. Well, another example of um, environmental damage uh, of this ecosystem have been the continuous extraction of water of the salares, especially the ones are located at the Altiplano. 
uh, for the copper um, industry. So here, this is an example of Salar de Lagunillas near Salar de Huasco that during 20 years suffer water extraction. And you can see here uh, from the images of Google Earth, how the, the surface of water has decreased um, dramatically. So in, in 20 years, thousands of years of evolutionary and biological history disappear. So that's uh, also I wanted to say that the, the, the damage that produced the, um, the extraction either of run and waters is beyond the physical state. I mean, it's beyond to take just water or brines. It's also affecting the whole ecosystem and a whole evolutionary and natural history present in these ecosystems. So uh, at the end, I wanted to say that the microbial diversity of these um, salares is not only characterized by the presence of multiple bacterial phyla, also, we can say that our microbial diversity hotspots, but also the frequent presence of unknown rare taxa. Um, this high diversity reported here and elsewhere will be related with a broad range of uh, tolerance or adaptation to extreme conditions that are really poly extreme conditions, and the presence also of multiple micro niches and probably having different functions, of course. So this diversity and their variability has important consequences in the function of the ecosystem and they are key to sustain other species that are present in this uh, area. So extreme environments in Northern Chile are unique and need to be preserved. And it is necessary, of course, a national and probably an international strategy of conservation for extreme environments and also extraterrestrial analogs. And here, again, is our role as a researcher to maybe focus on, one of this, on some of this question, what we really need to conserve, the environment, the taxa, or all together. So it's a very complicated issue for, for, for microbes. So again, I think Atacama gives us a lot of examples to work on this direction, especially when we are not only dealing with this uh, human intervention, but also probably with dramatic changes in the future because of climate change. So thank you very much for your attention and enjoy this International Microorganism Day. <laughs>